way on how it's made. Escalator handrails. We'll get things moving with the details of how they make them. The escalator was invented over a hundred years ago as an amusement park ride. The moving staircase was soon equipped with a moving handrail for safety reasons. But those early handrails were driven by oily chains, leaving passengers with greasy hands. We get a cleaner ride on today's escalators, and if we want thrills, we try a roller coaster. Going up, hold on to the handrail. It moves at the same speed as the stairs beneath you, making your ride safe. To make an escalator handrail, a machine called an extruder pulls synthetic rubber up into it. A turning screw inside the extruder forces the rubber through a die, the way a pasta maker squeezes out spaghetti. 10 to 15 centimeter wide rubber strips roll out into a tank of water to cool because the heat from the extruder could alter their molecular structure. Now the rubber strips move over rollers that are part of a mechanical measuring system. There's a little indicator on the roller that gauges the width and thickness of the rubber as it moves across. Over at the splitter machine, small round knives slice rubberized cotton the same width as the rubber strips. Then a mechanical puller unrolls material from four different spools. There are two streams of rubberized fabric, one stream of the synthetic rubber, which came out of the extruder earlier, and one of rubberized cable wiring. They merge and stick together as they travel over a big steel roller. An unwinder peels away a plastic liner from the now four-plied strip. Next, a worker places a piece of rubberized fabric and one of synthetic rubber on either side of the four-plied strip. He presses everything except the strip of rubber around a U-shaped aluminum former. With a piece of steel, he bears down on the shape so the layers stick together. Then he brushes tack cement on the outside and pulls that piece of synthetic rubber at the bottom up around it. He folds the rim down and using a hand roller, he seals its edges. Now the handrail has taken shape, but it's not strong enough. So a worker places it in a molding press. He positions a steel form inside the handrail so that it holds its shape. The top part of the mold lowers, and the handrail bakes under high pressure at 180 degrees Celsius. 10 to 15 minutes later, the mold lifts, and a chemical reaction called vulcanization has occurred. The layers have been laminated, and the handrail is now strong enough. The last step is to trim away the flash, or excess material. Here's the latest way to make an escalator handrail. A puller unwinds brass-coated steel wires from spools. Drawing them, along with thermoplastic urethane and polyester fabric, through the dies of an extruder. What comes out is a strip of plastic encased wires and sliders. The handrail shape passes through measuring devices that check its dimensions. Now they splice the ends of two plastic handrails together to form an endless loop. Using a roller, a worker presses the wires and plastic sliders of the inner carcass together. As he rolls, he blasts hot air into the splice with a heat gun. This softens the plastic so that it melds together. He covers it with a piece of thermoplastic urethane and again uses a heat gun to join the pieces. He wipes it clean with alcohol. Then he heats it up in a mold for a minute or two. The spliced section melts together and then cool water hardens it. There's no seam line where the handrail loop could break. That's to say, no loopholes that could cause any trouble. And that's the inside story on the escalator handrail. Something to think about when you're on your way up.